Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for joining us on the channel today. Today, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna be talking about how bad backpacking gear can equate to a failed through hike. We have a gear bag that we're gonna be pulling apart, ripping apart, and really dissecting um, to see if maybe that added into the fact of what made this employee of ours actually fail at this through hike attempt that he was doing. Also, this was something that was top of mind for me because as we were coming off of a trail pretty recently, we were coming off with five days worth of gear and everything, and there were people hiking up with one to two days worth of gear, and they had massive backpacks. And I turned to the team and I said, hey, uh, we got work to do, guys. There's, a, there's, there's basically no one with an ultralight pack on, and it was driving me crazy because these guys looked miserable. Meanwhile, we were flying down the trail with our you know, 10 to 12 pound base weight packs, uh, love and life. So today, we're actually gonna bring in um, the guy who's usually behind the camera and a newer addition to our team, Joseph, and we're gonna talk about a trip that he did. Don't break a sweat uh, lifting around. the pack around here. Oh my. Most of you probably have not met Joseph yet. He is our video guy. He's a little bit newer to the team, and uh, he did some backpacking before he joined the team. He's been coming through a lot of our video footage and he wanted to bring in this pack and have us kind of tear it apart. But tell us a little bit about what this pack is and why is it full gear? I decided I was gonna hike a 280 mile uh, trail that had never been through hiked ever before and camp alone for the first time. And it was a recipe for disaster. But I bought this pack, um, bought some of the other gear here. A lot of the gear I already had. This was the lightest thing that I could come up with at the time. Uh, not really knowing that much about ultralight or anything like that. And, and this was a couple years ago. And if this I remember was, right, you said you have not unpacked this backpack. I, no, I took the clothing out, uh, most of it, and I took out the food. Everything else was bas it's basically in pristine condition since 2016. He's graciously invited me to uh, be a little critical of his gear here. Um, hopefully it's in good humor and good fun. But I, right. you gotta start off with this thing, man. Like, did you sleep on this thing for real? I did. I, I don't even know where to go with that. That looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> this was my, so I used to bring like a four inch thick pad okay. with me. And I was just okay with like a hundred pound pack. I'm going 280 miles, never done anything this long before. I better go get the really thin pad. So did, yeah, Did you actually sleep on this though? I did. Did your eyes close and you drift into sleep? I slept very little. All right. <laughs> That's number one. I will say this is light. So as we go through some of this pack, the idea is that we're actually going to weigh some of the gear and show him the weight savings and also talk about maybe some better alternatives. So number one, you know, an insulated uh, air mattress style pad, an air chamber pad would have been way more comfortable. Personally, I look for something that's about three inches thick and, and then has a three plus R value rating. Um, this probably has somewhere in like the half to one R value rating and no comfort, so. What is this? Uh, it's a Camelback. And is that where you carried the Camelback when it had water in it? Absolutely. Uh, step number sure one, did. this is way heavier than you need. Obviously we use smart water bottle, uh, disposable plastic bottles typically. Sometimes we use platypus and stuff like that, but you could have got a lot lighter. I mean, that's fabric, that's not even plastic. This was extra unless you're doing day hikes with it. I don't know. That wasn't the plan. But but the biggest thing I would say is look at the location of where he had that. That's probably the least comfortable location you could carry water in. It's far away from your back. It's gonna make your pack way more unstable and it's gonna make it feel like it's pulling over backwards all the time and shifting. So, all right, let's rip into this thing, man. You ready? I don't know what I'm gonna find in here other than, um, you know, memories yeah. of your trip. How far did you make it on the trail? Uh, uh, two nights. Two nights. Two nights. You're going 280 miles was the original plan. Mm -hmm. How long were you sure expecting was. to be out there? Uh, three weeks. <laughs> There's more than, than gear that we probably should unpack here, but we're gonna we're gonna just talk about gear in this video, so. That was, honestly, this is my kryptonite this, of the whole This trip. is the first thing I gotta put on a scale here. So, my rain jackets typically are about six ounces. This is, this is uh, dense right here, my friend. That's a two pound, eight ounce jacket. So two and a half pounds um, in just your rain jacket, my friend. I mean, is this a full body like rain jacket? Does this this go to your a, knees? Oh yeah. This is, a, uh, this is my dad's old Gore-Tex uh, jacket. Is Gore-Tex in that thing? Special Forces. There's no membrane, my friend. The edge of this. It's got DWR on it, but there's no membrane. You. Wait, 
Okay. Diverge here. You Please. said that you thought that your rain jacket was one of the biggest reasons you failed on this hike. Absolutely. You got soaking wet, got, got cold. Soaking wet day one. Bad. It was yeah. bad. Then this you, didn't even you, fit me at the time, by the way. I used to be 300 pounds, so I was only able to zip it up like halfway, and I was being dumped on. I was I was soaked to the bone that night. So I think I, one one two one. There's a, there's a few things wrong with this. Obviously, you got to be able to zip up your rain jacket, or you, you just yeah. Um, the other thing though is, you thought this was a rain jacket, Gore-Tex rain jacket, right? Yeah. Well, I'm feeling this. I cannot feel any kind of a membrane. I feel an outer fabric that probably has a DWR coating on it. And on the inside, I'm just feeling this liner. This isn't a rain jacket, so this is just gonna soak through anyway. So you're gonna be wet, not only where your chest is exposed, but everywhere else. That's probably, I feel like that was probably a, oh. a bit of a breakthrough, because you always assumed that the jacket was the problem. <laughs> jacket was the problem. <laughs> all right, all right, let's keep going through here. I would have had a food bag with peanut butter, peanuts, um, candy bars, and tuna, probably. Solid. Yeah. I, I wouldn't would even critique that. That's all right. Look at this, Jim. Let's just throw the whole thing on the, the scale. Uh, the whole thing. The necessary items, I thought. You know, it's somewhere around six and a half pounds. That's I right. gotta start. It's a fire starter. I got a few fire starters. Yeah, you're you're just a solid 10 ounces. Leather is not the most ideal uh, backpacking weight conscious setup, but I gotta see what's in here because this is, this feels so dense. I don't even know what to expect. Okay, that is a good fire starter when the sun's up. Where you weren't doing any like prospecting for gold. <laughs> no. Or, oh, <laughs> just make sure. Ooh, that is yes. flint and steel. Literally carrying rocks around the mountain. Tip number one for ultralight backpackers, carry rocks. Go ahead, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. It's too close to the beard here. I taught Will in the survival merit badge for a summer. Solar panel. Solar panel to charge my phone so I can listen to podcasts on the trail. I will say this one is super dense and if you're only charging your phone, you may be able to get away with just less panels. I think if I were to do it again, I would get like the battery bank thing, which I don't even know if I knew about at the time. All right, toilet paper, oh, a whole is, pack is the of other wet part wipes. Of the, the toilet, toilet Yes. Paper. Yes. Complete with some dirt on it. With, <laughs> I hope that's dirt. <laughs> yeah, you hold that. When I was a kid, all I wanted was a mess kit. And I thought it would be the coolest thing. And if I had one, I thought for sure I could be a backpacker. The amount of enjoyment you get from just like collapsing it up and, and messing with this handle is, is pretty good. As a kid, I never used it once, but I played with it a lot <laughs> in my bedroom and, and around the house. I was always pretending to be a backpacker. So, uh, so typically I'm taking like a toques um, titanium stove or pot, you should say, and they're like around three ounces. A mess kit, seven and a half, so definitely a solid weight penalty. A pair of pliers, what was the plan with those? I don't know, in case I needed them. In case you needed them. That was a lot of the things it's in the here. the best way to pack, in case you need it, throw it in. Uh, matches, compass. Whistle was mostly, I think, what that was for. Okay, so a lot of extras to get a whistle here. Oh, we got two whistles. Were you gonna double, like, double up? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Plenty of bug repellent. This is the travel size, obviously. Now, uh, you can definitely get smaller sizes of bug repellent. Pencil sharpener. Pencil sharpener with, with, is that an eraser? With an eraser, right on the top. Double erasers, guys. Clearly wanted to erase more than he wrote. You got, you got doubles going. That's right. Mount them up. Got something like that going? Should have done that. All right. Triples! You said this is your first time backpacking. No, uh, no, no, first time alone, I tried it. Alone. Alone, alone. Yeah. Were you or were you not nervous? I was. Okay. Is there a possibility of three flashlights because you were a little nervous being out there alone? Maybe. I can't really remember why I have three flashlights in there. Now this twine is clearly strong enough to do what exactly? Start fires. Okay. Probably. Start fire, like a bow drill or something? Mm. More matches. More matches. More couldn't, matches. Couldn't find enough starting Got fire a, stuff. A fork and a single discharge bullet. That was my other whistle. I was a little nervous. <sighs> Who ah, started the trail with you that did not end it? Wait, it's a sleeping bag liner. Um, we do sell liners. They can be pretty solid. Were you carrying this for the cleanliness of your bag or the weight added, added warmth? I guess. Uh, added warmth. People often do that. I will say you don't get a lot of warmth out of liners. Um, I would do it more for keeping your bag clean and keeping your insulation 
at optimal performance by keeping the bag clean. System. Oh, one more pencil in there, ladies yeah. and gents, and a shoelace. So our typical cat are about three ounces. This is 14. Uh, definitely recommend these, but I recommend them when you've got a group uh, size or you're trying to pump out of really bad water sources maybe. That can be helpful, but definitely want to share these across multiple people. All right, what else we got in here? Pillow. Oh, I thought it was your sleeping bag for a second. Oh, I was like, no pillow. wonder you didn't last. That thing. <laughs> Camp pillow. Okay. Some yeah. people really prefer those. We do the blow up ones around here. That's my preference. And then you've got, yep, the Kelty Cosmic Bag. All right, couple things to note right now. One, don't store your bags like this for years on end. Two, this is what cheaper quality down looks like, um, undistributed and clumped up in a bag. He could probably revive this. There, we've got videos that that he, you know, you could wash this, clean this out, refluff it. But uh, this is in bad shape, my friend. No, I was freezing in this thing. That's why they got the liner. The got liner the might save me that night. And the the rainproof jacket. That's not oh, a rainproof jacket. All right, dude. And then you've got this. This is. I don't know how heavy that is, but I would guess you're in that four to five pound range with just the backpack here. So I don't know. We didn't even weigh all these things, but uh, all right. I want I want to hear from you. What would you have changed? What did you learn from all of this? To never go backpacking again or? Never go backpacking alone. So the first thing that uh, kind of comes to mind on this table is to take care of your down. Uh, I've learned that since working here. And the second, to know your gear and know where you're getting before going out on the trail. I had assumed before leaving that this jacket, this old jacket, which I had used before, still fit me and was waterproof. Both things not the case. He's literally been telling us for weeks, I have this old military Gore-Tex jacket. I have this military Gore-Tex jacket. I mean, how do you feel knowing now that it was never a rain jacket to begin with? I feel slighted. Last thing is you see me having multiple whistles, multiple flashlights. What I think happened uh, was that this was my bag of just camping, backpacking stuff, and I grabbed the entire bag without like really studying it. I think I could have saved a few pounds and yeah. gotten rid of a few extra items there. So that's the other thing. I'd say let's pack the bag back up. Let's just weigh it to get kind of a baseline and then we can see what maybe it should have looked like from there real quick. All right, so we got the pack all packed back up. We're gonna go ahead and weigh this thing. I will say this, the guys we were seeing on the trail head a few weeks back had way bigger packs than this. So kudos on that. Um, but also you've got to like be able to sleep at night. So that's not so big a kudos. Let's weigh this and see what your pack was at. Obviously this is no food, no water, and missing some clothing items. 19.7 pounds, round that to 20. Food, water, all that kind of stuff. You're probably sitting in the 30 to 40 pound range. All right, so here's my feedback. This isn't the worst thing, right? Getting out there is the most important thing. Do that. My tips would be there are definitely areas where you want to skimp and there's areas where you don't want to skimp. That pad to me would be a deal breaker. I would not last on the trail with that pad. The sleeping bag hopefully was in better shape when he went out there, but you would not be able to stay warm in that sleeping bag. Um, all the duplicates, stuff like that. But the biggest thing I would have said that would have actually helped you the most was going on some smaller backpacking trips beforehand to do shakeout trips and see like, holy cow, that pad is just not gonna work. Holy cow, I don't need three flashlights. And just just doing some of that would have probably been my biggest recommendation in all of this. I, I can see why you didn't end up blasting with this gear out there. Uh, Me too. My condolences. Um, hopefully, if you guys resonate with this pack right here, this guy, um, if you find some value in this, you need to subscribe to this channel and you need to watch our other videos because they will change your life and make backpacking enjoyable again. Now, when we talk about ultra light, it's not about just cutting the ounces. It's actually about being more comfortable on the trail. You say, well, why more comfortable? Well, with a lighter pack, you're more comfortable, but you also need to be more comfortable when you sleep. All around, the goal of going ultra light is to be more comfortable 24 hours a day. So if, you, if you've got a pack like this, or this has been your experience with backpacking, this is nothing like what it could be. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you check out our other videos, make sure you don't end up a failed through hiker. But there's always chances, second chances, we'll get you back out on the trail and uh, you're gonna have a different experience. So you'll see that in some future videos. Thanks for tuning in, we'll catch you in the next video.